There's a car going down Old Oak. She'll testify that the person sees the headlights. And at that point, lets her go, takes off running through the trees, back down Varsity, towards the Varsity Place apartments. Testimony. Is it the man that jumped out of the trees, grabbed her out of nowhere, and was dragging her back into those dark trees to rape her, was him the defendant. And what you're going to hear is that this young girl is so terrified after what happened, she begins to cry. She wants to go home where it can be safe. But unfortunately, he is going that way. And she's far enough to go, I don't want to go anywhere he's going. The only reason that Mr. Deuce is sitting here is because of a perfect storm of coincidences that got him in here. 8.36, thought it was a teenager with oversized white t-shirt on, dark, baggy blue jeans, running toward a jogger. She even described the clothes that the jogger had on. So they get this information after the fact, but this is the first person that spotted the perpetrator. Basically, this information came to the police later in the investigation after she got the safety notice saying, hey, watch out, it was an attack on campus kind of thing. Well, I saw this guy running toward a jogger. This is what he had on. White t-shirt, dark navy blue jeans, running toward a jogger. Okay. They sent her six photographs, and by now, they have gotten this confession from Deere and Deuce over here. So they take Deere and Deuce's picture and six other pictures, and they send them to her, because she's about an hour away at this point in time. <clears throat> not only does she not pick out Deere and Deuce, she actually picked out somebody different and said, I think it's number six. Now... What I will tell you is I don't think the evidence is going to show at any point in time, right up until today's date, that anybody ever made a positive, untainted identification of Deere and Deuce. 